Should have looked this up. Should have looked it up. But I didn't look it up, so this is what we'll do. Hi everybody, my name's Jason, and welcome to Cats and Pets. Right now, my living room is kind of covered with stuff, but don't worry, it's all for a good purpose. So today, we're working on one of those projects that I started getting bits and pieces of together about 10 months ago. But now, we're actually getting to it. And that project would be making a nice, tough, like, mammoth cat scratcher. I'm not talking about one of those $5 Walmart ones that just breaks. You know, you'll have it in the corner for a while, the cats will use it, and then it becomes just like a pile of, like, plasticky, rope-shredded mush that eventually you realize, I just need to throw this away. No, today we're making a tank of a thing that'll hopefully last a lifetime. And I'm going to be somewhat following the tutorial from dreamalittlebigger.com where they make their own cat scratcher, but of course I'm going to make some of my own modifications. And so in planning this video and buying stuff, I realized we could make like a fancy version and like a not quite as fancy version. It's the version I'll call, it's not so bad that you want to hide it when people come over, but you're not going to win interior decorator of the gear award if that's a thing for your cat scratcher. But if that is something you're interested in, I'll kind of make notes along the way of this is how you can make it a little prettier or nicer or whatever, and I'll probably end up making that version down the line anyway. So you can look at both. And if you see this video far enough in the future, I'll link it down in the description below. So what are we going to need? The most obvious things are our platform and our post. And this may be your biggest expense, depending on where you get your stuff from. In my case, Somebody at work had this 4x4 fence post sitting in their backyard for, I don't know, how many years? I think whoever first built their neighborhood or house, like, had this piece, it wasn't the right size, and they just chucked it in the yard. So he was gonna throw it away, but I was like, I'll take that. Once again, many months ago. And this was part of, like, an 8-foot section that I cut down to 2 and a half feet long. And so with one 8-foot post, you could make, like, three scratchers, like two normal size one and one short one, or maybe like a couple really tall ones. But yeah, you'll need one four inch by four inch post, or at least two and a half feet of one. Next, you're gonna need your platform. Online, they recommend a three fourths inch thick uh, piece of plywood that you cut to 18 inches by 18 inches. I think half inch thick would be more than fine enough. If you have inch thick stuff, whatever. It just has to be a sturdy platform. So what I have is my dance floor that turned into my giant cat grass bed. And for that cat grass bed, I already had a two foot by eight foot section. So I just decided to make my base a little bigger. I went outside, measured two feet down, and just cut a nice, you know, two foot square. So a foot and a half sides is probably your minimum. If you want to go bigger, feel free. It kind of depends how much floor space you want to take up. But of course, a bigger base is always sturdier. But even with a foot and a half, your cat's going to be like, on the platform while they're scratching, so you don't really have to worry about it tipping over. At least I wouldn't think. So yeah, I realized that this, that was my cat grass bed, and my post are actually super nasty from being outside and stuff, so I'm gonna take a quick uh, wiping cleaning break. So you may wanna do that too, depending on where you got your stuff from. Just grab some rags from your rag bag, which every good person has a rag bag. Mine are currently an old uh, Splinter Cell shirt from when I did promotions for that game. Too cool, you know. All right, kitties, let's do some cleaning. Yeah, Sarah, I know you vacuumed right before you left. I don't know how this dirt got everywhere. I'm not as worried about the post because this is gonna be wrapped in rope anyway. Although I may try to sand off some of the more nasty looking stuff. So you might want your vacuum nearby. So yeah. Kind of the point is, this doesn't have to be the nicest looking stuff because it's mainly going to be covered up and you can really use scraps from someone else or maybe even the store. Like if Home Depot has a fence post like this, but it's warped because it just got, you know, wet in delivery or something, they can't sell it. They may be willing to just give it to you for like a dollar or just give it to you for free. So kind of keep an eye out. Just gonna have to vacuum it anyway. Just gonna have to vacuum it. Luna's not a fan of the vacuum. I don't know if she's afraid of it or not, but she likes to battle with it. 
Oh, you got it, Cliff. Okay, next you're gonna need what I'm gonna call a base cover. So for me, that's this little carpet sample here. And that's most likely what you'll use is just some carpet sample if you can get one for free. Or some people I saw online will go to like the dollar store or Walmart or something and get a pretty mat or rug that they wanna use. So for sizing, if you're going for the less fancy, easier way like I'm doing, you're gonna want this to be slightly bigger than your base. So if you have a two by two base, you're gonna to wanna to have, you know, a couple inches on either side. If you have an 18 inch by 18 inch base, you're gonna want a 20 by 20 piece. Carpet's pretty easy to work with, so if you get something that's drastically too big, you can use a box cutter, cut it up. So for me, if I have my carpet down, and I have my base here, you'll see I have a little room on the sides. Kinda of here, a little less on the top and bottom, I'd like a little bit more, but I think I'll be okay. If you're going the nicer version, you're going to want your base and your carpet piece to match up perfectly. Because ideally, you can go to the store and buy yourself a piece of trim. So this is an 8 foot piece of trim, uh, it was $5 maybe. It's kind of a half circle, you can get fancier ones with grooves or notches or whatever you really want. This width should match whatever... Hey man, what are you doing? Can you see me? He's a... Uh battling with the trim there. This width should ideally match the size of your base. So, one inch thick base, one inch thick trim. Ideally, at the end, you get your piece of trim, you tack it in here, then you have kind of a nice finished edge on your scratcher. My plan right now is to not do that. I'm just gonna get my carpet and kind of wrap it around and make it like a nice, easy, simple solution. Although, looking at this now, that would be kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So yeah, a few other things you might need. Uh, wood glue, depending on how you're putting your carpet on or a staple gun, maybe both. Drill bit's a little smaller than your screw for putting your post and your board together. I'll show that later. Measuring tape, drill, pencil. You're also gonna need some rope for the actual scratching part. I have 5 16th inch by 164 feet rope. I asked for this for Christmas last year, so it's been 10 months. This has been 10 months in the making. I'm not quite sure how much you'll need, but I'll use this, see how it does. And in the description below, I'll list all the things you'll need and maybe include how much of this I actually used, so you'll have a more definite answer. Another thing that looks nice no matter which version you go with, the hardware store sells these end caps that you can put on top of your post at the end. That's really cheap and easy and it'll look nice and you won't have that raw exposed board on the top of your scratcher. Though, make sure it actually fits. I bought this from my hardware store yesterday. It says for a 4x4 post. This doesn't exactly click on here, so I am a little bitter about that. I might try to see if they have some bigger ones. I measured this. It's about three and a half inches, so either I don't understand or somebody messed up somewhere, but we'll see. Yep, just measured my trim. It's three-fourths inch thick. My plywood's only half inch thick. I'm definitely gonna do a fancier version, which if you're curious, that'll have wood trim on the edges. I might try to find a prettier carpet piece than generic gray. You can actually dye the rope to a multicolored thing. Maybe I'll do a purple and gold for JMU or something like that. But yeah, today we're sticking with easy. All right, so next up, I need to find the center of my board and the center of my carpet. Now, in tutorials I've seen online, they've done this kind of separate. They've found the center of this, and they started doing their wood post bit and got it stuck on there. But I think what I'm gonna do is this. I'm trying to use my entire piece of carpet, which is mostly square, it's a little rectangle. Rectangle? Rectangular? That's the word. So I'm gonna find the center of this first, measure out my hole for my post, and then cut that. Then I'll place this on top of my board and use it as a guide to draw where I'm gonna put my post. So let's get started. All right, so it's 27 inches across, which means the halfway point is 13 and three quarters, if I can math. Definitely need something better than that to work with. Ooh. All right, take two. 13 and three quarters. Right about there, 13 and 3 quarters, right about there. Just gonna use my board here. Uh, I already took the cap off. Good one, Jason. This is kind of my guide. Center line. This is about 25 and a half inches this way, 25 and a quarter inches this way, which is what, 12 and 3 eighths? Is that right? Hey Google, what's 25 and a half divided by 2? The answer is 12.75. 12 and 3 quarters, alright. I can math. That should be right about there, there. All right, so if we move our floof, now I have a center point, kind of. It's a little, a little blurry. Make it a little darker for the camera, maybe. So I have my cross point right here. So I'm gonna measure, you know, 
two inches out either direction and that'll be my square and then I'll cut that out I should have a nice four by four inch hole in a perfect world and mostly centered it's kind of a lot of theory we'll see I guess it's not theory it's math whatever got a yardstick lined up here two inches there two inches there two inches there two inches there, two inches there. this isn't this isn't quite looking big enough so what if I this post seems a little extra thick too, so I'm gonna make mark center of that, center of that, center of that. Oh yeah, this is a skinny edge. I'm right? kind of center of that. I think my post is a little, a little jacked up, but that's what you get when you work with free. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna take this, line up the little places I marked with my cross piece as best I can. It's looking a little funny. I feel like I can line up. Three, but not quite four. That's pretty close. All right, so I'm gonna draw a nice box around that. And that will be my square cutout piece. Get the cutting station, make it double thick. Double thick, oh yeah. All right, kiddies, let's cut out a square. It's cutting super easy, this is nice. I'm kind of going slowly and patiently with it because I don't want to overcut it and have a giant slit in my carpet, although, It'd probably be covered up and wouldn't matter that much. Alright. Got less little odds and ends I can trim here, but I might not worry about that until I actually get it on something and see what it's like. What do you think, Mill? Let's just see for ha ha's. That's pretty good. If I could have done it. Hmm. Maybe I could have done it slightly smaller, but I think that's pretty good. Alright, golden! That's easier. Do that. All right, so post fits in the hole pretty easily. I probably want it a little more snug, that way it's really pressed up against there, but no big deal. Next, I'm gonna use that hole to mark where I need to put my post on my board, or my platform, or base, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so looking at this now, maybe this wasn't as clever as I thought it was. Uh, I guess the measuring both options probably would work out pretty well, but I think this will be pretty close. So I'm just gonna somewhat eyeball the center of this here, just because I want to have a little bit of edge I can wrap around, ideally, so I can kind of line that up like that. These guys are going to have more than enough on either side, I believe. Alright, so I think that right there will be good. Fold this over, in place, set it back down, I think that's what I'll try to do. A marker, i mark out my little square here, and get my Yard stick, make, connecting the diagonals to make kind of an X. So that's where my post is gonna go on the other side. Which you may think doesn't help me, but I'm planning on drilling a pilot hole with a bit straight through the center, and then I'll have my center point over here, and that'll still be good. Or I can measure it, but you know, we're trying things out. So I'm gonna put one hole in the center and some more kind of along these outer edges. So one hole right in the center. over got five holes here which what I'm going to do I don't think I have a good way around this so I am just going to measure two inches out from my center hole here that way I can make myself a nice box the fact that my post isn't exactly four by four and that my carpet isn't exactly a perfect square is kind of throwing me off a little bit so if you do perfect squares for everything It'd be nice and easy just to like find the center and draw things. Mine is just getting slightly skewed a little bit, but that's okay. So ideally here, you're gonna get your post set in the center of your platform here, then get some wood glue like underneath there and kind of bind it and let it hold for a little while. That way you can flip it over and then drill your holes. I don't really have the patience for that. So I'm gonna see if I can put this down, look underneath it, kind of line it up and then drill it because that's what I feel like doing today. So let's do this. This guy. Approximately center. So if I look, I line up my diagonal lines with the edges of this board, then I should be pretty centered, I think. If all goes well. So if you didn't catch what I was doing there, for my center point there, I had drawn an X out. And so these lines, I was lining up with the corners of my post. So I should be nice and centered and lined up, I think. I think that will work. We're about to find out. Let's see how. This goes. Go. 
I don't know if that worked how I wanted it to, but we're going to put in some screws that I think are way too long and see how it works. Because what's life without some experimentation, right? All right, guys, can I do this without moving everything? Did that twist and turn when I did it? I don't know. I guess Mr. Screw number two will tell me. All right, boom. That worked, kind of, I think. Moo, this is how we go do this construction. Moo is sitting right here if you're curious. Kitty, why isn't anybody showing up? I think she's been there. Oh. Can you see Luna in the back? Floof! We got her peeking through. So cute. She's like, what are all these loud noises? Why is this in the living room? I know, Kitty, I know. I was gonna put in five, which is probably overkill, but let's at least do an experiment of flipping over. Oh, baby. Look at that. So, oh, huh. Kind of centered-ish. Hmm, that is a little skewed. Um, well, I could try to change it, or maybe it's good enough. Let's just try to toss this on here right quick and see what our, see what we're looking like. So how much space we got on our edges? That's the real question. So that's not as far as I wanted it to, and that's definitely further than I wanted to. Okay, well, I should wait a minute. A little bit of pulley, adjusty. That's okay. Live and learn, I say. Right, kittens? Well, okay. So I was planning on doing five screws there, but honestly, three going in two and a half inches is definitely more than enough. It, it's rock solid, it's not gonna go anywhere. My bottom is a little bit off, partially because I'm bent, partially because I'm not a good craftsman. So I want this edge here and this edge here, that's pretty solid. But as you can see, this one has, you know, a little bit over here and this one doesn't have any. Though this may work out for me because this edge is kind of janky and this edge has like the carpeted finish. Although it may be a problem as far as being level. We'll see about that in a second. So my plan for this, since I have a little bit of extra space, and this was the plan from the beginning, not just because I'm you know, winging it, um, was to get this folded over and kind of staple gun it on the bottom. That way it has, I don't know if a layer of protection is the right word, almost like it has feet on the bottom of this. So I put this raw wood thing on my wood floor without having to like rub around and scrape on it. But first, we need to actually affix this carpet to this better. So what people online did is got some wood glue, slathered it around the bottom, and let it dry for a while. Clean and dry surfaces, apply glue generously on surface, Join and clamp for 20 minutes. Parts should fit tightly. Excess glue, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's for wood on wood. I'm just gonna slather this kind of on there. Maybe put some weights on there. Then I'm gonna run to the hardware store, return this trim and these caps that don't fit, and see how it looks when I come back. I don't actually know how much this needs. I don't use wood glue. I actually bought some for this project. But really, this carpet really shouldn't be going anywhere, I don't think. So I'm just gonna try to slather it around, get towards the edges, and see what happens. I guess that's good. Should have looked this up. Should have looked it up. But I didn't look it up, so this is what we'll do. Maybe way too much. Maybe not enough. Something, something, something. Whatever. Look at one. Does it not seem like a lot? Kitties, how much should I use? Also, don't walk in this. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be stapled around anyway. All right, just stuck my hand in. Oops, stuck my hand in. That was good. All right, rotate around a little bit. All right, kiddies, let's get some weights. All right, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. Not that long. I'm gonna run to the hardware store. See you in a few. So, the internet said the hardware store would close at four. Got there at like three o'clock exactly. Closes at three, already locked up tight, done. A Little bitter about that, but what can you do? I'm ready to, hey, pardon G. I'm ready to get my rope, start putting on this thing, and make a real scratcher. What do you think, honey? Hmm? She's been really needy. I don't know if she just like wants loving or what. I guess Sarah's not here, so she gets half the attention as usual. Spoiled, that's what I think, honey. So I got my hammer. I got my trim finishing nails, whatever you want to call them. Got my pointy, And I got my rope. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this off right quick. All right, where is my rope in? There we go. To wrap through the center. This is probably logically done. I just already tied it in a knot. Let's see how I do, undo this. There we go. That's how it's done, kittens. Okay, there we go. 
honey. And I think you can get this rope a lot of places. Like I said, I asked for it for Christmas and that's where I got it. But I'm pretty sure on the packaging, they got it from Amazon. So, Amazon for life. If I can find it, I'll link it down below in my Amazon shop thing and you can get it from there. Hashtag support the channel. Okay. So online they say you just get your rope, start at the bottom, drop your nail, tack it in with one of your finishing nails, and then just wrap it around tight, and uh, keep on going and just tack it wherever you need. I'm wondering if I could use a staple gun, that would be really convenient, I just don't want them sticking out, you know? I might do an experiment. And I'm going to do a couple nails here at the bottom because I feel like this is the most, I don't know, sensitive starting point that I'm going to be pulling on. At least in my head that makes sense. Okay. And I'm just going to try to wrap and keep it tight. And the nails are really easy to toss in here, so I'm going to do it pretty liberally, I'll say. Probably a better way than tossing this over every time like I'm doing. But, starting out, that's what I'm doing. Alright, now that's going pretty well. Is there a way I can optimize this? Put a couple loops all at once and then do it. Without, oh, without tangling it up though. You're smart. worried that this part would actually take a long time but it's going fairly quick if you have thicker rope obviously it goes faster because you have to do less rows but yeah it's pretty nice I can just throw on some football do this no big deal So yeah, this is going quick, which is awesome. At this point, I just wanted to note that if you have your cap for your post, you probably want it on there now before you get your rope up there and it gets in the way. Since the hardware store is closed, I don't have one, but I do have some black duct tape. So I think I'm just gonna kinda string that across so it's like a black top that you almost don't notice. And we'll see how that looks for now. Later on, if I get like a nice wood top, I can always stick it on there and just kinda nail it on and it'll look nice. But for now, I'm working with what I got. There we go, now I'll just keep on wrapping. So now I'm just trying to get as close to the top as possible. I might tack it several times here. Not perfectly even on the way up, although if I push a little bit, I think I can make it a little bit more even. Just about to run out here, I think. Pull it pretty tight, throw in the last Couple of holding nails. One more, or one half of a loop. Do one right about here and we'll be good to go. I never ended up using the staple gun at all because the nails process was just really easy and really unobtrusive. So I just need to cut off my excess rope here with some scissors. Boom. So this is closer to what the top looks like. You can see I ended right here. If you want to, you could get some glue and kind of dab it along the edge. That way it kind of barely sticks up. Although mine, tucking it, really isn't too bad. So for this two and a half foot tall section, I think I read online that they had a hundred foot pack of rope. I have almost a six foot wingspan. It'll be a little less, so let's see. So yeah, I had about 36-ish feet plus or minus five remaining. So I think the 100 foot section will be just fine. You might be a little close to the end, but you should be good. So that's awesome. So we're almost done. Just a couple quick things. I'm gonna go ahead and put another screw or two in here. I already have the holes. This was kind of wobbling a lot when I was hitting it with the hammer. Probably not necessary, but you never know. Okay, now I'm gonna fold over my carpet pieces on the edge and staple gut it in. I think I can do that sitting down. Easier. Like I said, little lopsided, but what can you do? Well, I guess what you can do is measure better, but what can I do now? Got a little staple gun here. Pull it down tight. <laughs> kind of missed there. That wasn't too good, Jason. Close So I have these top parts that aren't even, but I'm just going to fold them over, staple it, 
I think from the top, you won't really be able to tell. And you know what? The kitties will still like it. All right, I decided to clean up my area a little bit. I actually took a look at like what I was doing and I'm really pleased. I think this thing turned out great. This is the bad edge, which isn't even that obtrusive, I think. Around these other edges, it's kind of wrapped down, which seems nice. This seems nice and padded. This is tall, which that's another problem. A lot of the times when you go and buy scratchers from like Walmart or whatever, they're always short and like, you know, this cat is, this cat, if Big Orange, is trying to reach up and scratch and it's only like this tall it doesn't really work they need to like stretch out their bodies you know right honey i wish i had my cap on this but honestly the black duct tape really doesn't show up that much so that's pretty cool because this project was relatively easy to make i do want to try the one where i put trim on the edges also i want to try to dye the rope because a couple of the pictures i saw where they had the dyed rope and they had like purple and white and purple and white and so it was like big thick stripes they look really cool so i want to try that out maybe around christmas i could do red and white and it'd be like a big candy cane scratcher or something i don't know so many possibilities but yeah i'm really excited i can't wait for my kitties to try it uh, Luna's around here somewhere. She's the one that uses the scratching stuff the most. And Mumu is here chilling on the couch, so he's not like up and active at the moment. But yeah. Oh, this thing feels sturdy too, which is nice. It feels like, you know, it could take some hits if, I don't know, it had to. It could survive an earthquake maybe. Oof, my living room is hot though. These lights put out a lot of heat. So do you have any ideas on how you can make this better, prettier, different? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're new here, I do all sorts of cat related videos, including DIYs. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. But now I'm gonna go hang out with these kitties, maybe turn on some Netflix. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.